<laughs> um, well, obviously, Tim is a producer on the film, so it's very helpful having him available to answer my questions about anything, which is great. But I grew up with Alice. Like, Alice, to me, is someone I read as a child and who I read to my children and my parents read to me. So that as being English, she's very much part of your brain, she just exists, and so I kind of know who she is. Um, and when I used to read Lewis Carroll as a child, I remember laughing because he's funny. And my background in filmmaking has largely been in comedy. So I was quite keen to bring that element to back to the, the world of Lewis Carroll and of Underland. Mm -hmm. Right, so yes, a lot of comedy, but also a lot more drama. Sure. More adventure. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> How difficult was it to actually bring, to actually really stamp your, your identity on this, on this film? Wait, was Tim Burton there not just as a producer? Was he also there to try? I mean, could you ask him, do you think this would work? I mean, is he, um, what, what, could I, what could I incorporate into the film? Oh, I see. Not really, no, it was, the, it was the thing whereby I would talk to, I'd show him things I was working on. Because, again, for, he provided the kind of universe guidelines as, as to what the characters would look like and what the world sort of roughly looks like. But this film is set in a different time period and a different geographical space. So it meant that I could bring things that I like design-wise to it too. I think this film is a, little, a tad more human. If you look at the first film, it's largely set in the court of the Red Queen and the White Queen. But in this film we have like a town and we have people and those, that townscape and that urban landscape is largely based on the drawings of John Tenniel, who is the original illustrator of the books of Alice in Wonderland and Alice the Looking Glass. And so what I did is when I read the books, I used to ignore the characters at the front and try and see what's behind them, and then use that as a basis for the design of the, this movie. Yes. Um, it's very much so. Yes, I really hope it is because for me, Alice in this film is the is the what would happen if Alice from the book were to grow up, because Alice in the book is a very outspoken, unique uh, individual, very strong very opinionated and who doesn't suffer fools gladly. And I think um, Mia in this film feels very similar to that. If that girl grew up, she would be like, ah, oh, Alice. Um, and that's very important to me because I think those, those qualities make her feel very modern. Because this book was written in 1862, or 71, sorry, this book. Um, and so it feels like Alice in this movie is the grown-up version of that same girl. Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, there's, 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 the main thing to me is the question of time, is that Alice, I think, at the beginning of the film, thinks time is her enemy because it, it, she, it has stolen her father. And I think through the film, she learns to appreciate time. And I think one of the great things about life is if you can appreciate time, you have no regrets. And so that's a very nice message for anybody, I think. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, that was very much a conscious choice. Um, when you read Alice in Wonderland, the book, you, when you, Alice first meets the Hatter, what the Hatter says to him, her, sorry, is, um, is I've been stuck at this tea party since last March when time and I quarreled. So to him, time is a real person. And so that's Lewis Carroll's idea, so I thought that was fun. Um, but if you have another bad guy, it's quite, you don't, Red Queen is already a kind of an ultimate bad guy. Uh, and so time could be a more of a fun bad guy. And I thought there's no one better to play a strong, funny bad guy than my friend Sasha Baron Cohen, because he not only brings comedy, but also I think you like his characters. You feel, you know, you feel sorry for time by the end of this film, which I like about that, which is fun. Mm -hmm. 
aunque no tiene mucho que ver con la Alicia de Disney, no uh -huh. de la de los Animals, uh -huh. esa no me gusta. Uh -huh. Que si tuvieras que hacer otra película de Disney de los clásicos de animación, uh -huh. ¿cuál harías y por qué? Yes. Disney classical yes. And okay, this one's very difficult, but yes. there is Alice in Wonderland, yes. the classic Disney one. For sure. Out of all the classic films, <laughs> is there anyone you would like to be to <laughs> All the Disney films. That's a lot of that's a lot of classic Disney films. Um, that is a difficult question to answer. Um, I I love I've, I know a lot of Disney movies, and there's some of them are rather obscure. But there's a very good one called Something Wicked This Way Comes, which I think is a very good film from the 70s. It's an unusual one. It's not one you might remember necessarily. Um, but there's that one I've always really liked, and I also like The Black Hole, which also is a very unpopular choice, but I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. What was the name of the Disney film? The first one? Yes. It's called Something Wicked This Way Comes. Okay, so it's about something wicked this way comes. It's about a visiting circus. It's creepy. Ah, and it's a weird, weird one from the 70s. Okay. <laughs>